So hello, this is Karen Yancey with Online Learning Services at the College of St. Rose, and I am going to discuss some e-learning principles that can be applied to any learning design, any cla online class design that you are doing. There are several principles, um, and I'm using the e-learning and the science of instruction book by um, Ruth Clark and Richard Meyer as my source for these. There are many guidelines that things that could apply to your situation. Um, at, the, at the top of this document, which will be available, uh, are the discussions of what the theories and principles that they're getting these recommendations from. So the suggested guidelines are simply recommendations or best practices. And I'll go through several of them and try to give you verbal examples. So the first one is don't allow time separation of visual and audio that describes that visual. So this is pretty obvious. Um, if you have a picture on the slide of the PowerPoint, you want to discuss that and address that picture at the same time you're presenting it. So the next one is design space for feedback to be visual, visible close to the practice answers. So for example, in Canvas's speed grader, um, they have a lot of feedback features, uh, text, te uh, speech to text, um, audio, video feedback, and it's right next to the document or the image that you are grading. So you want to put the feedback and the product close together in time and space. The, you want to place a label on the screen when you're deal, rather than on the legends. So if you're doing a pie chart, instead of having red and then put 70% to represent what red means, go ahead and put the 70% in the space where the red is if you can fit it in there. Um, you can use a little arrow that points to the red if it's a very thin slice and put 70%. You want to put the, the um, the label very close or within the graphic. Um, number four is very similar to number two, which is avoid separating feedback information on a learner's question that has to be integrated for a, for a process. So if a learner says, um, how do I, how do I um, butter a pan when I'm making a cake? That buttered pan is a very integral part of the process of making a cake. So you want to address that question right then and there before they go to the next step. Um, so separating feedback and answers to questions in time and space is not a good practice. You want to get them close together. You want to inform that person when they need that information. Script visual coaches to present instruction. So if you have a program such as Articulate Storyline, and you have a, a virtual coach, and it could, it could be just an audio recording. It doesn't have to be an animated person. You want to script what, you're, what that coach is going to say. Having a script is very helpful to articulate the ideas clearly. Um, so scripts are very good to have for audio and video production units that you're putting in your class. Use transformational graphics to show changes over time. So it's like a GIF. If you're familiar with GIF images that are very, very short animations, they might have a series of three images that change the shape of the person so that it looks like they're running. If you're presenting changes over time, you want to use those transformational graphics. They can be very simple graphics. You know, a stick figure running with one foot in front of the other. Um, and the next principle is to use interpretive graphics to explain a system. For example, if you have an image of water pipes, you would want to put an arrow in the direction of flow that that water would go in. That's, a tr that's an interpretive graphic that explains the system. Um, for the next one is to use animation um, animations to demonstrate procedures, or if you don't want to use an animation, you can use a seri series of stills to illustrate a process. So you could take a picture of a child putting out a glass, and then the child pouring water in the glass, and then the child drinking from the glass. That would be a series of stills that shows, shows a process. 
Um, other principles are um, avoid irrelevant graphics, stories, or excessively lengthy text. If you have a canvas page, you don't want the page to be too long. Um, if you have a, if you want to just put a really cute graphic because it looks cute, don't do that. You want anything you put in your design needs to be intent on helping the learner learn something. There's got to be a reason for adding that graphic. Um, I know that sometimes when you're lecturing, having a story to tell, a side note is kind of enjo enjoyable, but it, it breaks up the learning uh, sometimes because some students have a hard time figuring out which piece of information is more important than another. Um, that's why we use the concept maps in the modules in um, our, the LMS Canvas. Write in a conversational style using a first or second person pronoun. So when you're in Canvas and you have a module and you have the first page of that module is a statement like, I'm really glad to see the effort that I saw in the last module. The discussion was great. This is, these are the three points I noticed in the class discussion from last week. Now this week we're going to do this instead. And I want you to keep, uh, I want you to pay attention to this principle. Um, so use those conversational pronouns um, and then break down the content into small topic chunks to be easier more easily accessed by the learner. So you could you do this with the Canvas modules. You can do this with videos. If you have a five minute lecture video and then another five minute lecture video followed by another five minute lecture video, it's separating those concepts into chunks that allow the learner to process that information in little modules. So down here are some best practices for collaborative learning, uh, group work in an online environment. That could be discussion boards or um, people who are working collaboratively via real-time Zoom or Google Meetup or something like that. For these kinds of projects, you want to assign a collaborative project that is worthy of being a collaborative project. Uh, you don't want to design a one that can be done easily by one of the people in the group within 15 minutes. It's got to be big enough to break pieces up and have each one do something. For small teams, uh, form, you need to form small teams of two to four members of diverse knowledge um, so that the more experienced ones can transfer the problem to the, or transfer the concepts to the problem. And the less experienced ones um, can process um, the familiar problems they've seen already. And you've got a good dynamic between people who ha are learning the concept and people who are transferring it into a generalized state or a more specific state, depending on what the project is. You want to provide structured team processes that support individual participation and individual accountability for outcomes. So you might have each person in that group rate the other members of how involved they were in the project. You might have each one of them write a brief two paragraph summary of the work that, that they did as a group and submit it to the teacher. Um, there are some uh, group activities where you can have one person or all four members grade each other, not just rate them by how much they worked, but actually give them each other a grade. And then the teacher would be the person who has the final say on, um, I'm sorry, what I was referring to was a situation in which you had one group that was grading three other groups. So you have four different grades from the same group for everybody in the class. And then the teacher can look and compare those grades to see if they match up by each individual person. So there, there are four grades per person <laughs> to see if there's any consistency in those grades. That, the next one is provides, um, use a combination of synchronous collaboration for synergy and asynchronous collaboration for reflection and equal participation. 
So um, in a group project, you would have them, you would tell them, I want you to use Google Meetup to meet at least once a week, and then you can use a post board to collaborate for the rest of the week. This gives people the synergy, the energy from meeting up with their group mates, and it also gives them a temporal or time space or a time time difference that gives them time to reflect on what they decided in the meeting, what they decided in the synchronous environment, and then how they're going to apply that or do their job afterwards. Um, reflection is an important part of the learning process. Provide structured assignments, such as structured controversy, to minimize extraneous cognitive loads. So if you, when you do um, post-board environments or discussion environments, you want to keep certain things consistent. Everybody has to reply to two people. Um, everybody has to post two paragraph initial posts and keep that consistent so that they know how the structure is going to be every time they debate something in a post in a online post board environment. If you switch up the rules, they have, there's more cognitive processing they have to engage in to, to figure out what they have to do. So you want to keep those, that framework of rules consistent. And then the last one is use facilitation techniques that optimize social presence in online collaborative environments, such as the introduce yourself um, discussion board, the page where the instructor introduces themselves with a video recording or a picture of their face in an audio recording that optimizes social presence. Um, you can enforce that the students also post with a video reply or if they feel uncomfortable a picture of themselves and an audio reply um, that or you can say every week when you post or reply to somebody choose one of the three choices um, and you have to do a different choice on the second reply so if you write back to somebody that second reply has to be either audio or video um, you can that gives the learner choice it gives them time to prepare themselves for recording and um, it forces them to use different media um, because that gives so much more social presence than just a wall of text so that concludes the e-learning um, section of this and it is, as I said, it's from the um, e-learning and science of instruction by Ruth Clark and Richard Meyer. Thanks.